my very first day. I go into class, I sit in between two white, like two white kids, right? But I'm sitting towards the back. I was like five minutes late and I can't hear what the professor's saying. Turn to one person, I said, hey, like, did you hear what the professor said? They turned to me, looked me up and down, like kind of like scoff and then turn away. It took a very big toll on me mentally. Why didn't you just drop out? Why did you think, let me just continue pushing through this? Yeah. So I think just having that thought in the back of my head, like I need to get my family in a better position. I need to do everything I can to take advantage of what they've been able to give me um, yeah. and the opportunities that I have. But like obviously, like how I said, like I had like soccer. Like that was the one thing nobody could judge me in. I think everyone can agree with, can relate to how therapeutic soccer is. Like you said, you yeah. escape you escape real life for a little bit when you when you go and play. Uh, welcome back to the podcast, guys. Um, as you can see, I don't have my brother here with me today. Um, he was unfortunately feeling a little sick. Today's his birthday too, so um, kind of sucks. I have one of like my closest and longest friends here. He plays goal, he's a goalkeeper. Um, he played for the uh, Chapman University, and he is currently studying uh, health sciences. Yeah. Health so sciences. I just graduated, um, so I got my bachelor's, but I'm going to be applying to PA school next year. Victor Jacinto. Yep. Um, so yeah, again, so dude, yeah, I've known you since third grade. Yeah. Um, again, one of my longest friends, uh, and it's cool, dude. And now we have you like. Be, like us being like you have been a part of without a doubt now is it's sick being as like a trainer and then eventually seeing where we can progress through there um but before we started like with all the questions and stuff yeah. um i want a, a current event and i want your opinion on it okay have you heard about the usl possible promotion and relegation i have yeah, yeah? it's right. actually um uh with my roommates we've actually talked about it before because I have two roommates who are from San Diego, so they're uh -huh. big San Diego Loyal fans. Oh, okay. So they've talked about like wanting the Loyal to be promoted and how it should be a big enough team to to be able to be promoted. But uh -huh. um, now it has the extra layer of now San Diego has their own MLS team. I don't know if you've heard. Oh, right, um, right, right, but right, they're right. going to be inducted pretty soon. So yeah, I I, I always thought it would have would have been a better idea to do the promotion just because it kind of gives that incentive to yeah. you know try to win the league right up to the first division. But uh, no, yeah. but but they're not going to the MLS. Oh no, it's not oh, affiliated with oh, the MLS. Okay. Oh, it's, it's just, just like the USL. It's just USL. USL. Oh, okay. So I think the idea is the USL one right now. It's currently USL Championship, right. which is second division, and then USL League One, um, which would be considered third division. Um, and so what they're thinking, I think, what their idea is to implement another division in between those two. Oh, okay. So it'd be USL Championship and then something else, and then USL League One. Right. Um, and then just have promotion relegation along those three um, uh, leagues. Right. So MLS, MLS just be, has okay. its own separate thing. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, that would be sick, though, especially in, like, San Diego, that now they have their, or they're going to have their uh, MLS team. But, no, it's just in the USL. Because, I, I, I don't know, I think, because they're two completely different franchises, so I think they're trying to, I think the USL, I think, is really trying to make a statement. But, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen. But, yeah, right. it would be, it would be, it would be sick. That, yeah. All right, bro, so let's just go back. Because I know so much about you, having grown up with you. But um, let's just, let's, let's go dive into your perspective. Um, well, just when did you start uh, playing soccer? Uh, so I was, I like around five, six years old. Um, it was initially, I was I was very chubby as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, so my mom put me in to lose weight. So I started at AYSO. Uh, so I actually started as a field player. Uh -huh. I would be kind of thrown around anywhere, like forward, midfield, mm -hmm. like defender, whatever, wherever I could run, honestly. Um, but then when I got to U10, so I was like nine, eight years old, um, I had a team that had no keeper. So the coach asked, and you, you know Walter, um, yeah. so he was like, "Oh, do we do we have anyone who wants to be a keeper?" And I immediately raised my hand. I was like, "Let's try it out." Like I was tired of the running. I, yeah. I just wanted something new. And my mom obviously was against it. She was like, "No, like I put you in to lose weight." But, <laughs> um, I wanted to try it out. He trained me himself. Um, so in that first year, I he trained me as a keeper. I played keeper the full season. And then this one, they still have like the all star like fl uh, like flex. I think you were still oh uh, yeah right, then. Right. Um, after that first year, I got an invite to travel for the All-Star team and then the Flex team the season after. Um, and this is when AYSO was still, I mean, I would say it's still a pretty big organization, but yeah. obviously it was much different times and it was still more competitive. Right. Um, 
but yeah, so I, I grew up through that through that system um, yeah. before going club. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would say I, I feel like at that time AYSO was probably like that all star flex or whatever like right. the higher higher divisions of the AYSO. I think were definitely at a higher level back then than they yeah. are now. I yeah. think now players who would have been in AYSO. Um, like in those divisions, they so, um back then are now in club at that age. Just start, and then yeah. I, so I don't know what that says about the system now. If like the club level is probably dropping a little bit, or if the AYSO level um, has completely dropped, I don't yeah. know. But um, okay, so then you started playing goalkeeper when you were ten. Uh, when I was nine, nine, nine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was like the U ten. Yeah. And then, so did you like automatically fall in love with it, or was it? Yeah, I think I got. I, I like that idea of like making those crucial saves, you know, like yeah. in the one, like one zero 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 games where I can come up big, make a yeah. save. And I always was like, I, like I said, I was a bigger kid, so mm. um, and those small goals, obviously, I, I covered a good amount. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just liked it. Like, I feel, it feel it feels like you can fly, you know, sometimes. Mm. And for when I was a kid, like being that heavy, making a save up in the air like it felt pretty cool uh -huh. you know? um, and just like I said like having those big moments where you come up big for your team yeah that could happen at any time so okay yeah. so then you said Walter um, yes. which is who your it was just your coach at the time yeah so I I grew up playing with them um, I played with them from like eight years old up until 12 like mm -hmm. before I went to club so um, I grew up with him he was like a father figure to me personally um, and he yeah, he trained me all four years like, like those four years continuously just kept I would go one on one with him oh, um, and then like the team trainings obviously um, but yeah, yeah. He, he trained me himself because he, he played keeper when, oh. he, when he was uh, when he played himself uh -huh. so, how often yeah. did you guys do one on ones um, so we would train twice a week with a team so mm. we would do an hour before like the one on one and then I would go in another day like if we train Tuesday Thursday I would go Wednesday one-on-one -on -one with him you played AYSO up until what age up until middle school um, so I was playing AYSO and then um, I okay. was playing well, this, to explain to the viewers yes. AYSO is just like it's kind of where like everyone starts right. I feel like or not everyone starts I guess it's just more like I would say everyone who wants to put their kid in, in, in soccer but can't afford right. club yeah it's to, it, it, and that's why I feel like that level was actually like, like pretty good back then because um, you had a lot of quality players playing that league, but just parents couldn't afford them to play in club because of how expensive club soccer right. is here. Um, so yeah, so that's like kind of like, yeah, where you a lot of players, a lot of ballers started off with right. in the AY. So, but okay, so then up until what age? Yeah, so I actually I totally forgot. Um, so from eight to ten, I played AY. So then uh -huh. after the like All Star Flex season. Um, I went to New Mesa. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I went. So to you New started a club. Yeah, so I started a oh. club when I was ten. Um, I like one of the coaches saw me play. He went to, out to like one of the tournaments to scout, mm -hmm. and so he asked me to come on. I went on. I stayed for about a year, um, and then to, like it wasn't really for me. It wasn't like the money. Like money wasn't an issue mm -hmm. um, because at that point they still had like the scholarships and stuff. Right. So I was in the full scholarship. Um, but I, I just didn't really like the fit. Like, I didn't feel like I fit in the team. Um, like, it was very manageable to do because it was in the area. But in terms of me feeling like I belonged to the team and kind of fitting the playing style of it, I didn't really feel like like I belonged there. So Okay, but in what way, though? Was it like, like, like kids weren't, like, actually bringing you in? Or were they, or was, like, the... Digger, because I imagine that age is no, it's not like necessarily like a plane that was like, oh, these guys play possession, these guys right. play kickball. Because I feel like the majority at that age is like, it's kickball. Yeah, it, so. I, I think it was more um, like, I mean, you know, like we grew up not like poor, but um, <laughs> and like like compared to the kids that yeah. we would play with, like yeah. a lot of those kids were like pay to play, like uh, okay, um, you know, lived at, like they would invite me over to their house before practice, and I like yeah, for example, like one kid who. Their family built the ho their house themselves, spent like millions, and I just walk in and like they have their own chef, like stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I just I just felt uh, like not un like kind of uncomfortable, like it just felt weird being there. I was like, and I was obviously, like, like at a young age, like you're kind of like, oh dang, like you yeah, know, it, just, it just feels weird being there. Okay. Um, but I mean, the kid the kids like with me personally were fine. They they tried to include me, like I said, like they invite me over. Yeah. Um, obviously, I was a new kid on the team, so the coach too would be like would try to help mm. like have me 
uh, immerse myself into the group. But right. It just felt a little like weird being there personally. That yeah. sounds crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually yeah. I, like playing club soccer though, like you kind of you have that having grown up the way we did, and then you you're surrounded by like these players who can yeah. actually afford to be on the on the club team, right. and you're just like, wow, these are yeah, yeah. I have a few of those experiences. But um, okay, so then you leave then. Yeah, so I left Newport Mesa, and then I went back to. Um, the flex team with Walter because so Walter ended up like moving up with the team so he was a coach for all stars was a coach for uh, flex so he, he stayed with the, with the team um, so I went back asked if I could go back I tried out again um, they put me back onto the team and so at that point was also when they started like the leagues at Ray so like the, oh, I think it was the California yeah. league so I was playing um, on the flex team as well as a Saturday league on the side and then a Sunday league on the side in Santa Ana um, and that was from like 10 to 12. And then um, one of the kids that I played with in Sunday League when I was 11 played for West Coast, West Coast, which is the club that Sergio played at. Mm. Um, so she had the coach come out and watch the game. And he talked to me after one of the games and asked me to come try out for West Coast. Um, that was when I was 12, like when, when we were in middle school. Um, so I went to go try out. They liked what they saw. Um, so I ended up going on the full scholarship there as well. Um, and I stayed there for about a year, maybe. Mm. Um, and this is when they were still like affiliated with the Galaxy Academy. Like Miguel was still there, um, mm. Sergio was there. Uh, obviously, I didn't know Sergio at the time, but I knew Miguel at the time. So I mean, for me, it was it was a pretty good incentive. Um, I, I thought it, it'd be a good way to get back into the clubs, like club team, and then potentially like, because they what they what they would do at the time is players on like the A team, let's call it. Um, the Galaxy coaches would come and like watch the practices and games, mm. and then if they liked someone that they saw, they would be pulled up. Okay. Um, so, yeah, like I, I thought that would be that was a good incentive for me, like having that right. um, potential, like may, like maybe play for the Galaxy at some point, uh, the academy, of course. But yeah, so I went to West Coast for a year, and then um, that didn't work out either. Um, at the t- at the time, like nobody in my family drove, and the practices were in Ir- like in Irvine at Concordia. Oh, okay. So. I would have to be there five days a week, um, Monday, Wednesday with one team, like the A team, and then Tuesday, Thursdays with the B team, and then Friday was the goalkeeper training, like on the side with uh. one of the coaches. Um, so it got pretty difficult to manage because we had to, we had to ask people for rides, um, like whether it was a family friend or like one of the players would come pick us up. Mm. Um, it just got pretty difficult to manage because I would be there five days a week for practice and then the games on the weekend, um, yeah. which I would also have to have someone like come pick me up and drive me around. So. Yeah, yeah. It got, it got pretty difficult to manage after the year, and then after that, I left the West Coast and then went back to right. um, to the flex team, and then. But before you go, yeah. it's, it's, I think it's important to note that you're like you're you don't have any siblings. I don't. No. Yeah. So yeah. like, for me, that's like yeah, it makes it difficult because it's um, single mom, um, no siblings. So and then your mom doesn't drive, correct? Yeah. 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 So it's just like it's like yeah, at that it's like like hearing it. I, f- I feel like people who don't know where we're from and don't know like the distance, like now that we drive is like, oh, okay, yeah, you're going exactly from Costa Mesa to Irvine, that's like, that's nothing. But at that age, it's like, dude, like, and then like having your, I would assume like during that time you were just taking the bus everywhere. Yeah, pretty much so to travel. I, at, once I was like 12, I had to learn to take the bus on my own because yeah. before my mom would have to leave work early to take me to practices and games. Um, but like the flex team would train in Costa Mesa. Um, so it was easier for me to, you know, take a bus for 20 minutes compared to having to figure out How like what buses to take to Irvine. Oh, dude, I, uh, I can't even do yeah. that now. I would get lost. Yeah. I still use the map to get to it. <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. um, but uh, no, okay, so yeah. So because like me, like being one of five and right. being the youngest of five, um, it's like in that situation, it's like, okay, ask my sister. That sister can't do it. Ask my other sister. Right. Ask my other sister. If not, okay, ask my brother. So it's like that kind of, and then I have my dad who can, who would drive. Like my mom doesn't drive, but I have my dad who could possibly yeah. drive. So it was like, wow, yeah, I can imagine that being tough. And especially like five times a week, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, at that age, is like unheard of. I think yeah. so many club teams just train like twice a week. And it's like, that's a different story. It's, I think that's yeah. crazy. But um, okay. Um, so, okay, so you're taking the bus to a lot of the practices, but going yeah. to Irvine, like, do you know Emilio? Like yes. He's the goalkeeper yeah, yeah. for my club team yeah. at Slammers. He same thing, like probably like same age, like around twelve, and he lived in Santa Ana. 
So you're and yeah. um, he would sometimes like be like pulling up to practice like super late, or well, not super late, but like late. And then, um, but our coach, he would always like kind of like tease the guys who would show up late, like, you know, have us all clap for him or whatever and do stuff like that. Um, but with Emilio, he never did that. Like, when yeah. Emilio would come, he would just say, like, hey, Emilio and all that stuff, right? right. Um, but, and I remember thinking, like, why is this guy getting special <laughs> training? Yeah. What the hell? But then I, then I found out this guy's taking the bus from, Santa um, from Santa Ana to Costa Mesa, and I was just thinking, I'm like, how are you doing that at that age, dude? That's yeah. crazy. And, yeah, I, I think it's, like, it's 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 uncommon for many people, but it's also very common in, yeah. um, for like people from where we grew up to be traveling just on the bus um, on your own at twelve. Like, dude, I know my sister doesn't even left, leave my <laughs> my twelve year old nephew doesn't even yeah. let him go out of the house like to the store to go by himself. But like, it's then travel on the bus. I think that's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, okay, I, so how long were you doing that for? Um, probably I would say like two or three years um, because then my aunt started driving so she got okay. her license um, so once that like little backstory once like that flex team ended up transitioning over to New Prima Mesa okay. um, but it got bought out by Stryker so it was like Stryker's New Prima Mesa huh. um, so we were stay, it's like still staying, stay, stay, uh, still stay in the same facility um, that we were training in before but now we were under like the Stryker's name uh -huh. um, and my aunt started got her license, started driving, so she was able to start taking me to practices and games and stuff. Um, mm. So it started to be a little more manageable. And obviously, like a lot of those players that were on the team, I had known for the last like five years. So mm. um, their families would be more than willing to come pick me up, drop us, drop me off yeah. um, if needed. Uh, yeah, we made it work once once that happened. Was there ever a point where your like parent or where your mom was just like, we gotta stop, we gotta. Like yeah, we can't, we can't make this happen. Like you're gonna stop soccer. Yeah. So actually, um, like once we were done with West Coast, um, that's when it was kind of like I actually had like a break before I went back to Flex. Uh -huh. um, I didn't play for like six months, maybe, um, just because the season was still going on for Flex. So I couldn't go back until that was done. Um, and obviously, like I, I wasn't gonna go to another club team to try out since it was the middle of the season, and yeah. it just would have been the same issue with like transportation and being able to manage that. So after West Coast, like me and my mom talked, we took that break. And then if I was able to go back to Flex, I'd go back. But obviously, like if, it felt weird for me, like leaving that team and saying like, oh, I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to try mm -hmm. a club. I'm going to try something else. And then it not working out right. and then coming back and being like, oh, can you guys take me back? Right. Um, so we, that, that, that was like one of the issues we talked about, um, about like not coming back and just trying to find something else. But I knew like. I had built those relationships with them for the last like, yeah. four or five years because Walter was still the coach and a lot of the players were still the same players. So um, I talked with them, you know, like I, I was honest with them, like, hey, it didn't work out. Um, so is it fine like, if I can come back? Um, you know, I just want to keep playing. Um, I Obviously, like, I've known you guys for the last four or five years. So um, would that be okay like for me to come back? And mm. they were, you know, they were happy to have me back. So after those six months, I went back um, and... We had another coach that had come in, um, who we're, we're very close with now, um, who like had done like played in in Mexico, like was pro. Um, so I think that was what helped like take it to another level. Um, mm. And yeah. And at the uh, at this point, when you well, how old are you? Um, that was I went back when I was like 13, 14. Um, okay. That was like right after because I spent the year with West Coast and then came back. And then how long were you there for? Um, so we stayed a year with Flex again, and then um, Jerry, actually, uh, your Slammers coach, oh. this, is, this is when you guys are still, like, when you're from Mesa, um, he came to watch one of our practices, and then he, like, told us that they wanted to bring us on as a, as a new from Mesa team, um, and so that's when that whole transition happened after that first season back. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. All right, cool. And then, so then, so then do you guys go into club? Yeah, yeah we, uh, we, we had, like, the whole... Like, they had to do, like, the paperwork and everything. Because um, we were bringing on the whole team. Like, it wasn't, yeah. like, we had to do tryouts and stuff. Like, right. it was just the whole team just transitioned over. Um, and that was when that whole, like, merger was happening with Strikers and Upper Mesa. Um, so we went under their name. And, like, yeah, that's when the whole, the whole thing happened. So then you're playing club up and what well, you playing with New Upper Mesa up yeah. until how old? Uh, up until, like, when I was done with high school. Up until oh, okay. senior year, yeah. Okay, so then let's go into high school then. 
you we go into the same high school. Um, what? How would you summarize your high school experience? Um, playing? I would say it, it turned out pretty well. I mean, we all stuck together freshman year for the uh -huh. freshman team, which obviously we did really well in. Um, I played JV in sophomore year. And then I got pulled up to varsity with you guys junior year because uh, you guys moved up sophomore year. Yeah. Um, so I think overall it went pretty well. I think I had a pretty I, – I personally thought, like, my best year was my junior year. But mm -hmm. um, we – like, obviously there's other keepers who were older. Um, and I didn't get as much playing time as I thought I deserved. Um, which is, like, no hate to anybody, obviously. Like, you know, coach, <laughs> coach made the decision. Um and I think, obviously, like, the, the other goalkeeper was but, pretty yeah, skilled. But. I think that's just, like, the the reality of, like, high school soccer, yeah. though, is that, like, um, they do prioritize, well, at least in many schools, or at least in our school, it right. was, like, highly prioritized, like, seniority. Yeah. Um, so that's just, like, the unfortunate part. Like, that's, I, I feel like that's why our entire class going in was put into the freshman team because... Right because of that sole reason you know like i think we all we can all see that yeah. um considering like who was on that freshman team and who was on that varsity team that that year i feel like right. a lot of players could have been moved up but and then a lot of players who were on the jv team it was like very questionable as to why they weren't on the varsity team. Yeah. so it's just like it's like i don't know it's like seniority trying to make things fair right. all that stuff because and again, it's just it's it's high school soccer. That's not is not even it's nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, but so okay, just yeah, just to kind of give your I kind of already gave my opinion on it. But what do you think about high school soccer? Like just like genuinely yeah. think like yeah. What do you think about high school soccer? Um, honestly, I think it can depend like from program to program. Mm -hmm. um, I think every program is different. There's schools like Modern Day, like Jay Sarah, who are like we'll do anything to compete you know like obviously modern day has players come in um like they they take the best players and right. put the best starting 11 for the sake of the team mm -hmm. compared to other programs who right. like there's a lot of politics going on behind and like um it's just they uh, how do i <laughs> how do i say this? like no. there's people who are important to certain like to schools so they have priority over other players who should be playing um, which I also saw, like, which we can talk about later, but I coached at a, at a high school as well recently, oh, okay. these last few years, and I could also see that happening, like, how fa some families believed their influence in the school should have transitioned over to the soccer team, and mm -hmm. how much playing time they're... Pay to play, dude. Yeah, Just pay to play. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, that may, that's, I mean, that's super common, I feel, uh, just here in the States. But right. um, that's a controversial topic that we can yeah. dive into or something. But um, no, okay, yeah. Like I, I guess like my exact opinion on high school soccer, and you can tell me if you agree or disagree, is that it's just something fun to do. Yeah, you, it's it's fun because you it, it's cool. Like when we played, like play in front of all our friends some teachers who came out and stuff and and we played in like a for a high school like some nice facilities because right. the, the fields are made for the football team you know and football here is highly highly like praised and stuff so they have a decent field at least at our school was a decent um decent stadium right. it was like it was really nice so when the, when that stadium would get packed and you're playing there it was fun it was like crazy I, 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 one of the, like the the best games or the like the best memories I have is playing in a high same, school soccer yeah. game. Um, so, I, I, I my opinion on high school soccer is like it's just it's fun thing to do, but it's nothing to take too serious. Yeah, like I, you know, and I learned that later. Like, fr dude, like going into freshman year, me being told I'm be on the freshman team, like I was mad, dude. I was like, but now looking back, I'm actually really happy that that that's how it turned out right. because I got to play with you guys and we got to win the championship with like the homies. You know, yeah. that was cool. But um, yeah, I, 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 like, do you agree? Do you see it? Like, yeah. is it just something fun to do? Or do yeah, you see it? Yeah, like, I, I think even, like, it, it is a really, like, obviously, you're playing with all your friends, so it's more of a fun thing to do. And even in terms of, like, looking into, like, the college, like, yeah. like being trying to be recruited, a lot of colleges don't go to your high school games. No. They go to your club games um, for that same reason, because there's teams that, like, just dominate a league because the other teams are just bad. Um, but you don't exactly stand out 
you know yeah. it's more it's more of a fun thing to do um yeah yeah I, the I le- uh, yeah the level in high school even if you're playing like division one high school it's like yeah. you can't you know but i will say maybe it's changed now because um academy players are now allowed to play to in their play, high school right. team now maybe a lot of high sh- a lot of academy players aren't doing that for the sake of like reducing the risk of injury and stuff like that which i would probably highly advise them right um any academy players to just be cautious of it but um yeah it probably i think the levels changed now because club players were allowed to play high school but academy players weren't allowed to right, right. um so now i think academy players are allowed to so i can imagine and i mean i and you've been coaching high school uh, what would you think do you think the level has improved yeah in so i i coached at um Villa Park High School, but it was a girls team. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was with the varsity team the last three years. Um, and I, I was very lucky, like it's a really good program. Um, we made CIA finals my first year, semifinals the next year, and then semifinals again this past year. Um, and they're, they're division one, like it's a really yeah. good program. And a lot of the players do end up going on to D1 schools. Huh. Um, like some, we have had players be recruited by USC, U of A, like big, big name schools. So these uh, girls are already in, in academies and clubs? Yes, or, they're, yeah. yeah, a lot of them play in like, like we had two girls who were playing in the number one team in the country. Wow. Um, wow. So like, you know, like they, yeah. they're, they're really good players. We're yeah. very lucky. Um, and yeah, like I said, they, they dominated their league. They, we've won, they've won league like the last six years in a row. Yeah. And like they, they haven't lost a game in six years, essentially, yeah. in league. Wow. Um, and so I, I think I was very lucky in that sense to be part of a really successful program. Um, but I mean, credit, credit to them, you know, like right. at that point, they, they've already gone through the whole recruiting process early, yeah. um, but through club, like I mentioned yeah. before, um, like we have, we have had a couple, uh, college coaches come out, but nothing like U of A, USC, like yeah, big, big name schools, yeah. um, that a lot of them just go out to see them play for club rather than right. high school. Um, but again, like it, I was very lucky. Um, they they've dominated like every team, and they, they play like big name schools too. You know, like in terms of high school, because yeah. even like for us when we played um, before it transitioned to divisions being decided by how you do in like previous seasons, yeah. and um, because before it was just based on our, on school size, and our school yeah. was small. So um, for context, like we were D five. Yeah. Um, our freshman year, and then by the time we were juniors, um, when that whole transition happened, we moved up to like D three, D two, um, and started playing big name schools that we could actually that we actually competed with, mm. um, which I think also like is part of the high school experience. Like a lot of schools, just based by name, are considered to be good, but like if someone were to see like Estancia, like they're yeah. not going to consider it. Uh, yeah. Like a powerhouse, but I think I mean you know based off our junior and senior season, like we were. We were pretty good. We yeah. we had a, a really good team both years, especially our junior year. But the yeah. year I broke my collarbone. Yeah, that ain't good to play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, okay. So then after high school, you went to Chapman, but yeah. you didn't go to Chapman to play. No. You went to Chapman to study. Yeah, I. So, so I, I originally was going to be done with soccer right after high school. Mm-hmm. Um, like I finished my club season, and I thought like that was it. Um, I. I mean, obviously, like you know this, I was more of a school first, soccer second right. kind of guy, um, and so I was ready to be done. I thought like I'll play Sunday league for fun, um, maybe join the club team at Chapman, um, but I was never like. And, and then I had that whole thing with our coach. So our high school coach played at Chapman mm-hmm. um, f- under the same head coach that was my coach, um, mm. and so senior year, I. He, like he got me a meeting with him, so I went to go talk to him, uh, the Chapman coach. I went to go talk to him, and he basically said, like, we have four keepers, two of which are freshmen right now. Mm. Um, so you know, like, there's like if we if we would have maybe figured something out earlier, but um, I wasn't very good about the recruiting process because I wasn't planning to play in college right. per se. Um, so like I was like, hey, like that's it. Um, he said I could maybe try out the following year, like once two of the keepers graduated out, um, and to contact him again in the spring. So I was just kind of like, I'll focus on school, um, and then maybe try out in the future. Mm. Uh, but I did end up trying out, obviously. Um, and so freshman year, I joined the club team. I, I, I realized like I needed to, to still continue to play um, <laughs> right. because school was just driving me insane. Right. Um, I needed like that, like escape, um, hmm. essentially. And so, 
after the club season, which was going on during the actual season for the school, like for Chapman's team, um, I got an email from him saying, hey, like we've been having some issues with, um, like some of the keepers have gotten injured, some had a struggle to keep up with fitness. Um, can you come out and try out? So I tried out midway through their season, like after not playing for months. Um, but obviously, like I said, yeah, like I'm not going to turn it down. So I contacted, um, I used to train with UCI's goalkeeper. Um, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if you ever met him, but uh, Greg. Greg, right? yeah, yeah, Greg yeah, yeah. Um, which I was training with while at Strikers. Um, so I reached out to him and said, hey, like, I need an emergency session. Like, can you, like, I just need to get the rest out. Can you, like, come out? Um, so I had one session with him the week before um, the tryout. So um, I tried out with one of the assistant coaches. And then he was going to give his thoughts to our head coach. Um, and obviously, like, I needed to work in the fitness. So she told me, he's like, obviously, like, I can tell you're not fit. Like, maybe you haven't been playing or whatever. But from what I can see, like, you still have the, you know, like, and it's, it's hard to forget, like, basic keeper, like. Um, you you started to forget? No, like, it's, it's, it's not. It's hard it's, to forget. It's hard to forget. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so you started to no, forget no, no, how no. to play goalie? No, no, no. <laughs> um, like, you know, it's just basic stuff. And so um, he liked what he saw. He said he would talk to the head coach um, and then that they would re like be in contact. So that next week, um, Coach Eddie, the head coach, he reached out through an email and said, hey, like I talked to um, Coach Grazon. Um, he liked what he saw. Do you have any tape? So I had made like a super small like highlight video like from high school. Yeah. No, it was like, <laughs> it was, like, like little like club highlights, some like training stuff. Um, it was like a six minute video. And so I sent it over Six minute video is actually long for a highlight video. But they're just Especially like, for a goalie, yeah, bro. it was just like constant like saves. Like, but I also knew like I needed to include like stuff with my feet because yeah. playing like keeper in college, like you need to be really good with your feet. Um, and I wasn't like the best, but like I tried to put clips where I looked like I was, <laughs> I was pretty decent. Um, so I sent that over to him and he said, oh, like I like what I saw. Um, let's get you. But it, there was no point in me like joining midway through the season. He yeah. thought like that, that would be a year of eligibility just wasted. Yeah. So the plan was to go in the spring, train in the off season, and then that way I can get like, like uh, get with the team, so yeah. I can get to know everybody for the following fall season. But then the week, like while I was getting everything ready, like to be cleared and everything, the week that I was, the week before we were supposed to start off season training, COVID hit. Oh my God. So then everything shut down. Um, we just had to do like Zoom calls, like to basically keep updated with what we were gonna do. So I didn't actually start training with the team until like spring of sophomore year. So it was like a year off, basically. Um, but well, okay, so during that time, were you training on your own? So yeah, I, I, I realized like obviously you need to get fit. Um, he sent like all the fitness tests that we would be doing as soon as we would get back. And then just kind of like a summer workout that we had to keep up with. Um, so I'm curious there, um, he did he have expectations? Like were the expectations for the field players the same as for the goalkeepers in yeah. the fitness test? Yeah, I, really? he, yeah, our, yeah, they're very big. Like we have, we have a really, I, I thought we had a, like one of the best coaching staffs, obviously. Um, and all of them were very fitness based. Um, uh. And so I knew like, and then they, they told me to like, you need to be ready because that was one of the reasons that he reached out to me in the first place was because like uh, fitness for some of the keepers was a struggle. And like, even for me, like, like throughout all four years, like, it was very hard to keep up with the fitness as a keeper, what? obviously, because we're not doing the same thing, like even during trainings. Um, so sense. like we had to, <laughs> we had to do all the fitness tests um, and we weren't allowed to start fully training with the team until we passed at least one of the fitness tests. And like, you know me, like I'm not a long distance runner. Like, you know, like <laughs> yeah, I, that's like, the reason why you went yeah, to like we, play goalie. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. So <laughs> we had to do like the Cooper test, which is like the two miles and then the 15 minutes, um, the shuttle shuttle run, um, the beep test, like all the basic oh, tests yeah. that you need to do. Um, and But I think like that year that we had off during COVID, I, like I knew I had to get serious about it. So I was training every day, I work out every day, twice a day. Um, and so I, I was ready by the time we got back. And so when we got back, we got put into pods because like obviously COVID yeah. was still going on. Um, so we were in three groups of 10 and we'd go in four days a week to do fitness, uh, like just strictly fitness because we couldn't use the ball 
Um, we couldn't wow. be in. Like, we, we had 30, 30 yard sections on the field. Yeah. And so I, I felt like I was ready um, by the time we got in. And we had players who were, like, throwing up, like, after the first, like, mm. 30 minutes. So, like, I knew, like, I was in a good spot to be right. in. Um, and that continued on until we ended up having a game towards the end of the spring against one of um, the teams in that conference. Um, and I ended up being the only goalie on the roster for that game because um, two of them were saving the year of eligibility and then one had taken the um, year off of school. So I was the only keeper on the roster for that game. So like, I knew I was going to play regardless. Um, so I, like, I knew I had to keep up with the fitness right. and the training and everything. So. so you went into college studying, what was it again? Uh, health, health sciences. Health sciences. Yeah. Okay, so how difficult of a, now that you've finished, yeah. how difficult um, was that? It's very, sci like the two, first two years are just the, ge the general ed, um, which is all the sciences like biology, chemistry, phys like physiology, physics, all that stuff, um, which you, like, you know, our high school like wasn't the best in preparing us for it, right. like I feel very unprepared um, going in in terms of academics, especially because well, you, you guys know this. Like I was, I still had, I still wasn't driving at the time. So my first year, I was taking the bus every day to school. Mm -hmm. I had Monday through Friday, eight a.m. classes. Um, so I would leave five a.m. every day um, on a two-hour bus ride to be able to make it on time. What? Uh, there and back. Yeah. So I spent two hours going there, two hours going back. Two-hour bus ride. Yeah. I had to take two different buses. Um, so mm. like the wait in between and then just getting over there because it's an or it was an orange and yeah. obviously like like on 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 the map like on paper it closer me to the orange hours. shouldn't take two hours but like <laughs> it does it sucks I haven't gone to. um yeah and I, I think it started to take a toll on me mentally like once um like I started to really question like is this really like worth it like I should have gone somewhere closer to home um but like I, I kept going um I knew, like, eventually I started driving, so it would be a lot easier to do. So I just kind of tried to um, manage manage it as well as I could. What made you not just, like, be like, yeah, I'm just going to go to a JUCO that's closer to home right. while I until I can drive and then maybe transfer out? Why didn't you just be, like, why didn't you just drop out? Why yeah. didn't you, you know, why, like... Why did you think, let me just continue pushing through this? Yeah. I, I think I had, like, the biggest end goal of mine is ultimately, like, be able to help my family live comfortably. So I think just having that thought in the back of my head, like, I need to get my family in a better position mm -hmm. um, from what we were in and what I was in growing up. Because uh, they gave me everything, you know, like, obviously everything was soccer. Um, they didn't have the same opportunities that I did being in America, obviously, mm. um, like education wise, uh, being able to have a future career. Um, so I think just having that thought in the back of my head, like I need to I need to do everything I can to take advantage of what they've been able to give me um, yeah. and the opportunities that I have. So yeah, um, like I knew like giving up wasn't an option. Um, dropping out definitely wasn't an option. Mm. Um, and I think just going straight into like a four year university. Um, of that caliber was like that was that was the ultimate goal and that's why i think i always took education over soccer was because i knew like soccer I, I, it was going to be very difficult to make a career out of especially for goalkeepers um and which is not to like deter anyone from like trying to <laughs> obviously um but for me like i i, I knew like at academics was always going to be like a safe a safe way out if that makes sense i i, I get what you're saying is it, there's more security to that right. because there's there's a, like a sort of like a set path as to yeah. how you're going to do it um in soccer there's no set path you just it's yeah. people go pro in different ways people don't go pro because of different reasons so it's like yeah there's a lot of uncertainty with trying to pursue a pro contract and then there's a lot of more certainty with um Right, having to go yeah. through college. And like, and, obviously, I don't want that to scare anybody. Like, no, watching, yeah, um, and I, but I, yeah. but it 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 shouldn't scare anybody. But yeah. it should. They should know that's the reality of it. Yeah, and, and that's I, the risk you take. And yeah. that's partly what I deal with is knowing that I'm pursuing. Because um, I we again we grew up similar. We grew up um, with the same mindset because I right. I agree with everything you're saying and I feel the same exact way in terms of what how why I do the things I do is for my is for my family and me wanting to support them um, and put them in a more comfortable um, 
living situation than they currently are or have been. Right. Um, but me pursuing a pro contract is something that I've had to like deal with, like like fight with myself a little bit because I know that if I were to just have stuck to a degree that can secure me a job here and can secure or that can guarantee me making this amount of money f to support them, I could have done that. But I chose to take that selfish route of going pro because I know selfishly I wouldn't, I, I, I want to do that. And right. I know that I would not feel like I wouldn't be later down. I'd feel like I would probably resent my parents if I didn't pursue this. Right. But it's different. Um, I feel like our situation is a little different because they're like my parents, like I have both my parents who can support each other. I have four siblings who can then also support my parents if they needed to and support everybody. Like we're like a, a big family who can support each other, right. right? And I feel like you're in a situation where it's more like your mom raised you, well, granted with your aunts and stuff, but by yeah. her by herself and you and the, and you being the only child is like i can imagine it's like okay there's a lot of like you and it's not even like the responsibility that they put on you it's more like the responsibility you put on yourself was like i need to do this for them right. because they've done so much for me um so it's a little I, I can imagine it being a little bit more difficult and then like you said as a goalkeeper a lot more difficult of a position to actually like sign a pro contract but i can imagine you it like you feeling like okay, I can't. There's not a lot of risk I can really take in right. this. In, in this, um, and don't let me speak for you. No, that's yeah. not the case. But like yeah. then, no, I um, think I think it was also like, like I obviously have like my cousins, um, mm. which are like my siblings. Like I grew up with them since I was a kid. Um, so like it was always like there was eight of us all, all the time growing okay. up, right? Um, so it's me, my cousins, my aunts, my mom, my grandma. Um, but I think like well, you're one of the oldest, no? I'm I'm the oldest. Well, okay, like. That were like growing up, I was oldest. Right. Like we had yeah. other family come in um, uh, later on, but I think for me, I always was kind of set on not taking. Like I, in the back of my head, I thought like, oh, like maybe I can still go pro. But I think I always had, I always knew I would not end up pursuing it because mm -hmm. I mean, even growing up, like playing like flex and like obviously like it's it was still a good program to be in, but it wasn't a pro like. I wasn't being seen by college coaches. Yeah. It wasn't the I, highest yeah. level that you could possibly um, And I think it, it became more of like I was playing to continue to play because I wasn't able to be successful in club mm -hmm. to the point where I could be recruited straight out of yeah. high school. And I think it was kind of setting. I wanted to set the example for my cousins. Like, you, like we're going to go to college right after high school. Like, I didn't want to focus primarily on soccer and then they'd not work out because I wouldn't set a good example for them, you know? Right. Like, obviously, like, growing up, they always looked up to me because I was the oldest. I was the first to graduate high school, first to go to college. Like, I wanted to set that example for them as well. Um, yeah, I guess that's and, another difference between the two. Yeah. I'm the youngest of, of all my siblings and you being the oldest. So there's, like, different, like, yeah. mindsets going into it. I want to... Uh, okay, so you, you mentioned that you... You, you realized that you needed to play because school was driving you crazy. Yeah. So then, so, like, just speak more on that. Like, is it, like, did you, you, like, I, I mean, yeah, we play, yeah. like, I think everyone can agree with or can relate to how therapeutic soccer is and how, like, that's, like, just, like you said, you yeah. escape, you escape real life for a little bit when you, when you go and play. Right. Um, so how did that, how did that help you? Did you, like, the first year, or a year or two of not playing and just studying, and then the last few years uh, um, at Chapman, playing and studying. Did you find it to be a little bit more stressful towards the end or the beginning? Yeah, or um, I think like like I mentioned before, I was not our high school didn't prepare us, and like obviously it was so it was still a great experience like in terms of education. At least say I how thought, it is, I thought, bro. You know, say like, how it is. Like, they didn't well, prepare you. <laughs> like the thing is, like obviously, like I was <laughs> like I, I, like not, like not to brag or anything, obviously, but like. I was a very good student in high school. At, like I was involved with plenty of stuff. Um, yeah. And obviously like my grades were good enough to get me into like a four year private. Um, and in that time I felt like I'm gonna, you know, like conquer, <laughs> I'm gonna conquer college. Yeah. Um, but once I got there, it was like, I was surrounded. So for context, obviously I love my experience at Chapman, but it was a 
pri like primarily white institution. So I came in as a diversity student, um, surrounded by like a, like primarily white like students who came from money, mm. came from private schools, um, came in with like everything set for them compared to me coming in as like a first generation student, a uh, person of color who did not know how to navigate college right off the bat. Mm. So it was especially like doing the two hour bus ride there, two hour bus ride back, working yeah. a part time to be able to pay for school. Um, I think I was very lucky in that sense also because uh, I didn't have to worry too much about the cost of it. Um, I, I, I worked for scholarships through high school, knowing mm. that I, I needed to put my family in a spot where they didn't have to worry about paying for it. They, um, yeah. And so, like, like, obviously, all these kids are, like, fully paid off, um, whether it be, like, scholarships or just their family could afford it. And so then going into the classrooms surrounded by people who look nothing like me, um, like how they did in high school, obviously, um, it just kind of, like, I, I, it was a culture shock. Yeah. Um, and like not to get too deep into that, obviously, but um, yeah, it was it was very hard to manage the first year. Um, like quick quick little story, and which I told you guys was like kind of my the point where I realized how different I, everything was going to be. Like my very first day, I go into class. I'm taking four classes back to back, starting from 8 a.m. all the way to like 1 p.m. Um, I sit in between two two white like two white kids, right? Um, but I'm sitting towards the back because I had just had a class the hour before, so I was like five minutes late, whatever. Um, so I'm in the very back and I can't hear what the professor's saying. I turned to one person, I said, hey, like, did you hear what the professor said? Like, do you mind like, so I can get in my notes? They turn to me, look me up and down, like kind of like scoff and then turn away. <laughs> and so then I go turn to the other person to my left. <laughs> no way, after I, that guy, yeah, after that guy just, just, just judged just, you yeah, so hard, like, you went to the next person. Yeah, I, I was like, okay. Turn to the next person, ask the same question, get the same exact response. And so I was like, <laughs> damn, like, it's like that, that was the reality of it. And like, obviously not everybody was like that. That was just kind of my first experience <laughs> with it. Um, <laughs> and I knew, like, at that point, I had a. You what know, did you like, do after that, dude? I, I, that, I think that's what, that's like how I said before. Like, it took a very, like, a very big toll on me mentally. Um, dude, I think I would just start so dying laughing. Yeah, I was like, like to, to me at, the, like, at that time, obviously it was like funny, and I was like, damn, like no way that just happened. Uh -uh. Um, but then, like, when I walked into class, I'm like, damn, like this is how it's gonna be. Yeah, uh, from no, that's on. rough. Um, Especially so, having driven. Dude, oh, yeah, I've been I, on the bus for yeah, two hours like, to get I, there, I, I and then you get that response. I woke up at 5 a.m., did a two-hour bus ride, had three, three <laughs> one-hour classes before this. Like, that was, like, my breaking point. Are you sure yeah, you so, just, like, didn't... Dude, did you shower before going, dude? Because, like, it's probably, like, dude, this guy woke up at 5 in the morning. Dude, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a long day. Uh, <laughs> it was like that every day, obviously, from that yeah. point on. So I knew, like, it was going to be difficult to do. Oh, um, man. But, like, obviously, like I said, like, I, I had, like, soccer as, yeah. like, the... Like, that was the one thing nobody could judge me in. Um, and I think, like, from that point on, I knew I had to kind of set myself apart. And I, I after that, like, I kind of kept to myself um, for the next few weeks. Like, I would go to class. As soon as I was done with class, go straight home. Um, I wouldn't, like, stick around for any of the events. I wouldn't try to talk to anybody. Like, I had, like, maybe, like, a handful of friends mm. that, like, from those classes. But it was just because, like, we'd get paired together in lab or... Yeah, they were just like sitting next to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just kind of tried to build off of that, um, and then, yeah, that was that's kind of, that was kind of the reality of it for like the first year. Yeah. Okay, so then, I mean, you having then you joined the soccer team. Now you're like, now you have, just like, you yeah. the team is your friend. Like now yeah. you have like that's the thing. Like you go into like, like me going into um, UCI. It's like you're just you're kind of guaranteed friends because you're right. already a part of a team and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, so then now you have, you join the team, um, but I'm curious as to like, because a lot of people question like, how can you manage studying, especially the, um, what you were, uh, what you're studying health sciences, which is very difficult, um, how you manage studying that and then also playing, keeping fit, training every day yeah. and stuff like that. So like. How was that? Like, how, how were you able to manage it? Yeah. Um, like, it was it was funny, actually, because my grades were better 
when I was on the soccer team compared to my first year and a half when I wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that came, because I, I made a deal with my mom. Like, she was very against me joining the soccer team, but because she worried for that, like, she worried about right. that, like, my grades falling um, and not, like, me stressing about everything. Um, so I made a deal with her, like, if I joined the soccer team, like, I would still prioritize school, which is easy to do. Um, mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily easy, but, like, looking back at it, like, it wasn't that hard to manage because it kind of, it made me, made me, like, get everything done with school first. Yeah. Like, I would get everything done for school early in the week, go to practice um, without having to worry about, like, damn, like, I have a paper after. Right. Um, and I think it, I did have a couple extra layers later on because, like I said, like, I kept it myself, er, like, early on in school. But as the years progressed, when I joined the soccer team, I also joined, like, I joined clubs, I joined executive mm. boards, stuff like that. So I had a lot more on my plate, but I, like, soccer kind of made me organize myself a lot better, um, knowing that I still had to focus on everything while having soccer as, like, my escape. Right. Um, and I, I feel like and I, I, too many players and parents probably, like, stress about the idea of, like, yeah. how you can manage it in college. It's like, dude, if you're doing that, like, it's just it becomes natural if you've been doing it your entire life yeah. you know if, especially like in high school where you're playing and then you're doing well in high school right. if you're able to do that i think you can translate that to the college yeah. um, level as well if not better because more mature you have more time and experience doing it and stuff like that how many other clubs were you a part of so you're on the soccer team you're studying health sciences yeah. And then, how many other clubs were you a part of? So I, I was the exec board for Latinx club for a couple for two semesters, and then um, I was like part of the club in general. Uh, I was the, I went from vice president to co-president in like a span of two years for the first gen ambassadors, which is like for first generation students. Um, I joined the pre PA club. I also was looking for internships at the time, so I could kind of start getting that path ready post grad. Um, so I was doing quite a bit. Um, in terms of like clubs and extracurriculars, uh -huh. um, which obviously like added on to the whole, like and this is while I was in season two, yeah. so um, yeah, it <laughs> was crazy. Uh, yeah, it was a lot to manage. Yeah. Okay, so then now, um, you've just re recently graduated. Um, you're done playing, so now you're officially yeah. done playing, um, but now you're just kind of playing like for fun. Yeah, Sunday yeah, I just play Sunday like yeah. So. Um, now, what's life af uh, after college? Like, what, what are you doing now? Yeah, what so, is it, uh, what are your goals? right now, I'm interning at Kaiser. Um, I shadow a PA, which is a physician assistant there. Um, I've been doing that since November, but I'm starting an internship at Hogue in August um, with a uh, Cope Scholars, which is basically like a program where you're put into cohorts with like doctors, PAs, nurses um, to work. Like, you work directly with patients to get that patient care experience up. Um, so I'm, and then I'm doing EMT school in the fall, um, so I can work as in, in the EMT for the next year, um, before I apply. So like for context to apply to PA school, you need minimum a thousand hours of patient care, like direct patient care to apply. Uh, but to be competitive, you need more like two to 3000. Um, so. And how many hours do you have right now? Uh, I mean, I've been, I've been pretty bad about keeping track of it, but, um, like I, 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 I just kind of have been tracking like weekly. Um, cause I was going weekly with the PA and Kaiser, um, for like five hours, like at a time. Um, so I just kind of have been keeping track down that way. I don't, I don't know the number off the top of my yeah. head, but, um, like I, not nearly enough where I should <laughs> wear it, like to the 3000. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm trying, and you know, that's why I'm taking like, I'm taking a year, a, a gap year to be able to do all that, um, mm -hmm. before applying. And then the ultimate goal is like get into Chapman's PA school where they have a, if you remember the same scholarship, um, the scholarship that I had in high school that ran through college partnered up with Chapman's PA school mm. where they give um, between eight to 12 full rides for oh wow for first generation, like first generation students. Like I meet the qualifications essentially. Um, so as long as I can get into the school, then I can apply to that, which would take $200,000 like out, out of the, you know, like wow. I would, I, that's how much it is to go to yeah. PA school um, over the like long term, obviously. Um, so that would be a big help. Wow, dude. All right. I feel like there's still so much to like unravel in terms of like your future career and stuff because it's, 
there's so, so much, much there's do. still so yeah. much studying to do so yeah. much time still put into it um but okay to f- uh, to end the the podcast um i just like that uh, what advice would you have for not just goalkeepers just any player yeah. who's thinking who's in a same similar situation where they're like um i love this sport i just uh, i I want to play as long as at a, at the highest level I can possibly play for as long as possible. But I know that I just want to focus on school. Like, yeah. what what is? Uh, I advice? think I think it would be to not be afraid of like the opportunities that arise because I think when you think of D three because for con- Chapman's D three um, when like when when people think of D three it's like oh like it's not competitive mm-hmm. to, like it's, it's D three like it's not competitive it's not like a big name school but. Um, it was actually like I think it was a very competitive, like league that we played in. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we had a very competitive team, like super quick, obviously. Um, like we played against Sergio, like how he mentioned in his podcast, which is their D two school. Um, we ended up tying them zero zero, um, which is like unheard of, mm-hmm. like with, with teams of like you know from Division two to Division three, um, and we kept up with like other big name schools, um, and we ended up like winning our conference, going to the NCAA tournament. Um, so I think you're still going to have those experiences as a D3 player, um, without like, like, like if, if you're, if you want to have like a good balance of the two, like mm. D3 is a safe option. Um, cause you also have like the academics, you'll still be able to focus on that, but you'll still have a really competitive experience in terms of soccer as well. Okay. Yeah. You want to give them the, your Instagram handle? Oh yeah. Uh, it's just my name, Victor Jacinto, two O's at the end. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we'll put it on the in the link so you guys can follow follow us on instagram at without a doubt underscore athletics uh yeah thanks for for listening um and thank you victor yeah. for thank you bro so, yeah. thanks right. for having me